Genesis chapter 3. And I know she's going to leave my glasses. <laughs> oh, you got them! verses 1 through 8. And the servant that any of us feel which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and the evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. Amen. 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 Let us remain standing real quick just for a brief word of prayer. Thank you, honey. Father, we are in your presence. What a benefit that is, Lord. The Christ that you paid Jesus for us to be able to talk and speak in your name and be heard in heaven. Truly, we say thank you for that. God, we are so honored and blessed for all the things you have done for getting us all through another week. God, and as we look back, maybe we made some mistakes. Maybe we ran into some, some trouble, some troubling times, but God, you were there and you kept us. So we say thank you for that. And God, as you your word comes forth, I pray, O oh God, that you would help us to be better in battle. That, Lord, in this war we are fighting, God, that we would be sharper and, 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 and better in our defense. And, and Lord, when we, when we block and kick and punch, may we be swifter, God, that, that we might run this race, O oh God. We don't have much time here, God, but we, as your people, Lord, we want to work while it is day. But we know nighttime is coming when no man works. So God, speak to our hearts today. Speak to the preacher as well. Holy Ghost, assist me that we might be here stronger. This we pray in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Our theme for today is deliver me from this strange voice. Deliver me from this strange voice. Hallelujah. We are hopefully going to be a little more efficient in battle when we leave here today. This is more of the Spirit of God giving us technique so that we can overcome some of the arrows that pierce our minds that push us. Amen. We talk about deliver me. If I need to be delivered from something, that means I'm bound to something. That means something has a hold on me. That means I've been captured. That means I've been trapped. If we need to be delivered from something, then that, 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 that's not a good thing. But how many of you know we do have someone that can help us to come out? Amen. How many times has God brought you out of something that you needed to be delivered from? So I, I know he's able. But then we talk about this, this word, a strange voice. We are talking about thoughts and situations that cast.
capture us to where now we're being pushed. You understand what I'm saying? I would have had one of you come up and just stand there and relax, and I got behind you and I started pushing you, right? I would be able to move you, all right? And that's what's happening at times with some of us, including myself. I mean, you know, your pastor's learning, amen? Amen, amen. I'm, I, I'm not there yet. I'm gonna be learning until Jesus comes back, amen? I'm learning as I go. I fight the same battles you fight. The difference is now I can't teach it if I can't reach it. So therefore now as soon as something happens that captures me, I gotta automatically ask the Savior to deliver me. I can't afford to walk around all day long beat up. What good am I as a leader if I can't get rid of the devil? How can I tell you to get rid of the devil? How can I tell you how to be delivered from a strange voice if I can't be delivered? And believe me, this past week, my wife and I got hit with some things that, you know, and, and when we talk about this strange voice, now, when we talk about a strange voice, we must ask ourselves the question, well, how do I know when I'm being affected by a strange voice? How do I know that? Well, the word I want to give you is the word stagger. And I know I'm the only one in here that has ever staggered. <laughs> I get that. Y'all go through your whole entire life. Never been in a place where you were staggering a little bit. <laughs> we're not talking about that kind of staggering. We're talking about a spiritual stagger. Right? When we talk about this, this, this word stagger, it, it, it's a powerful word. It's a, the, the Greek word is diakrino, is, is the Greek word, but we needed to deal with this word stagger because when we're affected by a strange voice, we find ourselves staggered. When I mean by that, watch this now, the word here now means to be overwhelmed. So we're talking about situations setting up because in most cases, the situation will arise and then here come these strange voices to elevate it. Before you know it, you and I are walking around and we're staggered. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I've been staggered by certain thoughts because situations have heightened. We're talking about being overwhelmed. In this world, you shall what? Have tribulation, right? But what? Be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. So if I overcome the world, then even though you might be staggered, if you can hold on and just give me. 30 seconds of conversation. Maybe it might be praise. Maybe it might be, Lord, I remember when you got me out the last time. And God, I'm not going to react. And just give God 30 seconds. And he can step in and he can do something. Amen. This word stagger now. Overwhelmed. We're talking about fear. Overwhelmed with fear. Sometimes situations and that strange voice coming behind it can be overwhelming to where we have we experience great fear. Uh, where it causes us to doubt, yes. right? Where it lifts or it, it amplifies anxiety. It puts us in a state of confusion, frustration. Sometimes we get hit with stuff and we get frustrated, right? Sometimes we will even, we may not verbalize it, but we'll think to ourselves, God, this isn't fair. Does God really care? How could you allow that to happen to me? Look at all that I do for you, Lord. Right? I'm talking about being staggered, right? We're talking about this strange voice, right? And then anger and depression. So we're talking about, when we talk about a strange voice, if you've been affected by a strange voice, you are definitely in one of these categories. And how many of us can, can relate? You know, God forbid, some of us heard a bad report from the doctor. You might have got a call that somebody in the family close to you is, is, is now in the hospital and in intensive care. You know, uh, the job is, like, is going to be laying off. You know, uh, 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 anything that can overwhelm us to the point where we're staggering, God is going to help us today. Amen. Because if, if it's a half an hour of your time that the devil has, he's robbed you. Right? If, 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 there's, if, it's, if, if, if it's 20 minutes, of your peace when you're rattled, right? And today I'm praying that the Holy Spirit is going to help us to learn how to come out when we are, when we are affected by a strange voice. 
Right? Watch this now. The strange voice is most effective when we are dealing with something serious, something factual, and something threatening. Right? And now, there's a big difference in getting bit by a mosquito than getting bit by a box. Right? You get, by, get bit, bit by a mosquito, you just kind of know it. You know? You get bit by a wasp, you're going to have to go attend to that. You're going to have to go get something, put it on that, on that, get that stinger out, right? It needs some attention. Well, that, that's, the, that's the difference when some of the things that you and I deal with that we get all agitated about, and they're like mosquitoes. Some of us, we can't praise God if we get a bad text message from somebody. Right? You know, we can't praise God if we bitter. I'm not talking about mosquitoes. I'm talking about things that are serious. Things that are, you know, you know, you, you can't escape like it's right there in front of you. You know, some type of affliction that you just say, wow, God, is this really happening? So with this strange voice is most effective when it's something serious, when it's something threatening. And of course, we need to deal with the insight of the master of the strange voice. His name is Satan, and the word Satan, by the way, the, the word means adversary. His name was Lucifer, but when he rebelled against God, he became God's adversary. Jesus Christ defeated him 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ uh, uh, has the keys of death and of hell. So we don't have to worry about him because he's already been defeated, but you would never know it by the way some of us are handling ourselves as Christians. That's why I always got to remind myself, if I ever am affected by a strange voice, that my God is still in charge. Yes. My God still reigns. Yes. He brought me out yesterday, he'll bring me out today. He healed me yesterday, he'll heal me today. He released chains of bondage from me yesterday, he'll deliver me again today. We can't escape the strange voice, but we can be reminded that Jesus Christ defeated the devil. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Did he not defeat Satan? Yes. Huh? How many really believe he defeated Satan, yes. who used to be the prince of the air? Yes. Huh? He says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And he says, I have the keys of death and of heaven. So that means when you and I go to sleep, we're going to wake up immediately in the presence of God. Hallelujah. In the presence of our loved ones that have gone on, that know Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe the, the closest ones that have gone on will be the first at the gate. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged today. Because even though I go through every now and then, even though a strange voice can cause me to stagger, my God is able to deliver me. Know who I'm talking to today. We're going to be better off when we leave here today. We're going to be more quick. But I need to talk about this God just for a second. Right? His passion, his passion is to destroy God's creation through deception. That's his strength, his deception. He works our minds. He waits. Notice when Jesus was in the wilderness, did he come the first day? No, he didn't. Did he come two weeks later? No, he didn't. Did he come three weeks later? No. He waited till the last day, the 40th day, to come and tempt Jesus. Jesus defeated him with the word. Jesus was weak. Jesus was lonely. And if you know anything about solitary confinement, right, it's designed to stretch you. It's designed to, to, to capture your mind. And Jesus still said, it is written. <laughs> He's our example today. And some of us were getting deceived, some of us were getting beat up, some of us are getting sidetracked by this strange voice. And I'm one of them. But I'm praising God because I know how to come out. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know how to get my mind straight now. Amen. Yeah. See, they go, every now and then you're going to stagger, but I hear that the Holy Ghost is right there. Yeah. He'll sober you up immediately. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I want you quickly to keep your finger in Genesis 3 because we're going to go there, but I want you to turn to the book of Job, chapter 38. And I just want to give you a little background on 
Satan himself. Because I want to bring out a very strong point about his passion to destroy God's creation. Remember, keep your finger in Genesis 3. How many went through a few moments this past week where a strange voice kind of got in there and frustrated you a little bit, staggered you a little bit? And well, maybe I'm the only one. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you're going to leave here today a little better off. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to be here, leave here a little more equipped today. Yes, what do you have to say, man? Amen. Job chapter 38. All right. It says here now. Okay. Which verse am I looking at here? You know we serve a good God, don't we? <laughs> I'm trying to be, I'm all, I'm all organized. I have the scriptures down here, you know, written down, so I don't have to turn in my book and I look there and I'm like, wait a minute now. <laughs> I do not see the verses. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. All right. Praise God. Yeah. All right. And we know the story of Job because Job, no one in his church could say they had gone through what Job had gone through. Amen? Nobody. And God is answering him. Hallelujah. He, he, he's answering him with, a quest, with some questions. Are you there, verse 1? It says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, mm, Who is darkness? Who is this darkness counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Yes. Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line, the line upon it to what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? Watch this now. When the morning star sang together, read that latter part of that verse, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Okay, all right, let's, let's just stop right there for a second because we're not focusing on, on Job per se. We're focusing on the latter part of verse 7 because we find out something interesting. He says, all the sons of God shouted for joy. So here now, and if we connect that to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, it appears that the angelic hosts were created before God actually began the, the process of creation in terms of the universe and the earth. It looks here like the angels were able to witness God establishing the earth and creating and establishing the universe and the stars. Because it says here now that they are shouting with joy. So Satan now, who was Lucifer, and most theologians believe he was one of the three archangels. We have Daniel, I mean we have Gabriel, Michael, and then it was Lucifer. Okay, we know that he lost his position. The book of Ezekiel tells us that he was in charge of the praise and worship. That's why you see the enemy moves so swiftly through music. But the point I'm making is now, there was excitement within the angelic host when God was saying, let there be light. When he started separating the waters and causing the ground to be dry and the, the sea to have living creatures and, you know, this tree yielding this fruit and this seed and all that God was doing. And even when God got to the point where he says, and let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, the enemy was there witnessing God's passion for his creation. He was right there. When, 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 when God lays out those first two verses and you see all that he does for mankind, 